talk about anhedonia. This was one of the questions. So anhedonia, we all know, is diminished capacity for pleasure. You certainly are experiencing negative emotions, but you're not experiencing pleasure. Vlad, I would say the last decade, we've seen a lot of interest in trying to better understand anhedonia at a granular level. Now we talk about the anticipation of pleasure, we talk about the, uh, the consumption of pleasure, so so-called anticipatory and anticipa uh, uh, consumatory and anticipatory. anticipatory. So that's called reward response. How much response reward do you have? I'm anticipating it, I'm experiencing it. Another concept is what's called reward valuation. How much reward do I attach to a certain event or certain expectation in the future? And if that's abnormal, that can sometimes result in a motivational deficit. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. The third one, uh, Vlad, we know, is reward learning. Learning. Reward learning. And this is something really interesting because we as organisms, we tend to adapt our behavior in a way that we tend to seek out positively rewarding events. That has a certain reproductive and survival advantage. Uh, advantage. And when we get it right, we have the prediction accurate. If we get the reward prediction inaccurate, we tend to adapt our behavior in mm -hmm. the future. Mm -hmm. So in the world of neuroscience around reward, there's a concept called prediction error. And human beings, healthy human beings, tend to have what's called an optimism bias. They tend to have an overestimation of future reward in underestimation of future loss and punishment. Conversely, major depressive disorder has an underestimation of future reward and overestimation of future punishment and loss. Who here is married? Raise your hands, don't be embarrassed. <laughs> okay, so on your wedding day, you committed what's called a prediction error. So what you did <laughs> is you overestimated the reward and you <laughs> underestimated the punishment, okay? And you're all guilty. And so that's what's happening. Don't worry, don't beat yourselves up, that's normal. Um, the depressed patient has it the other way around. And this has been shown in neuroscience. Absolutely. You could say, well, obviously Vlad and Roger got time on their hands. What is the clinical relevance of this? When we are trying to engage patients in a care plan, we often struggle to actually keep them anticipating the expected benefit. Indeed. And they often stop their treatment because there's a lesion in the prediction of reward. 